Welcome to Galactic Astrology YouTube channel. My name is Julia Balaz and my guest today is Cooley Art. Some of you who are here for a while may remember Cooley from a podcast number 40, was it? Yes. Good. Um, Cooley has been certified quantum soul guidance practitioner since April 2023. So it's almost her uh, one year anniversary as we record this. Today is 4th of April 2024. The reason for today's video is to talk about her recent publishing of absolutely divinely beautiful oracle cards that include astrology information and galactic astrology information. So we'll talk all about them throughout the call. Welcome, Cooley. How are you feeling before the eclipse? Thank you, Julia. Well, excited about this call and really happy to be here. Uh, I'm so yes, glad that, we are, that we can do this today. I asked you before we started the recording, where is the solar eclipse that is occurring on the 8th of April in your natal chart. And it's just on the cusp of your kind of 9th, 10th house. So I think it's such a perfect timing for this video to come out around this time. May it, uh, bring the perfect audience to share and enjoy your creation and uh, may it really bless their lives in, in many ways. So I've been fortunate to work with Cooley's cards for I think almost a year as well. This is version number one that doesn't have the astrology and galactic astrology information. I am waiting for the shipment of the second version, which is upgraded with the galactic astrology information. I look forward to that. And in the meantime, I'm using a PDF version of the updated booklet. So, you know, I can already work with that. I do enjoy it. So for people that did not hear about your art previously and did not hear about your story and how these phenomenal, beautiful cards came to creation, can you please share a little bit your journey with art? When this gift, I truly believe this is a gift, when did it become activated in your life? Uh, when did you start actively pursuing this? I've always been interested in art, creating, painting, colors, and I started maybe when I was a teenager. Then for a while I would create some stuff, but maybe doing some other things in, in Japan when I was living there. And let's say I picked it up 17 years ago when I came back from Japan to France, where I'm currently living and got initiated um, to Reiki when the process started. I had picked up painting again and then for a few months, then got the initiation and then painted again. And then I could see and feel it had shifted greatly and also all the energy coming out from my hands, almost painful at the time. And that was really a big shift in my in my life. That's also when I got to read uh, Barbara Marciniak's books, not from the Pleiadians, I mean, some Pleiadians. I don't know if you've read them, it's Julia. A must read. I, yes, I did. It's a must read, yeah. When, yes, I felt so recall, connected. What was the year when you explored this? That was 2007, eight. That's yeah. when I got yeah. Uh, initiated, yeah. And actually, the, the Holistic Oracle, which is the name that was given to me when was in 2012 it was not that soon you know so i was very much into painting at the time mm -hmm. painting almost every day like oil painting and very intuitive because i never knew what i was going to paint that's the way i am so i would just pick up colors brushes and just start and see what coming and that's the way i like it i don't painting differently anyway so i would paint and maybe after a few years like five or six years, I had painted a hundred or more than that. And then I kind of felt going through the books of Barbara Marciniak again, that they were kind of belonging to families, uh, like the Four Seasons. And that's what started the, the thing. When I was reading one of her books, at some point, it just came down. It's just like, okay, now you create an oracle and it's based on the four seasons and then you just go through it with all the the knowledge i had acquired about a few things in energy work so i could put that also in inside of it and that was the first version and it came quickly and i kind of asked questions and i would get the answers you know like what's your name the holistic oracle okay and uh they, they told me um right away that it had to be uh, english and french because it had to spread to go to the family 
that's that's how I feel it. It's like it goes to the family. It kind of brings us together again. It's kind of a way to bring us together. You were born in France and you spent some time in Japan as well, right? Yes, um, about that's great. 17 years. Yeah. Oh, 17 years. It's all in 17 years, my life. And I'm starting a new 17 year okay. span. Oh, how exciting to enter it with celebrating this beautiful creation. So the cards were born you published them, you sold out the order. Is, is there anything else that you wanted to mention? About this one? So that yeah. was, it mentioned holistic because it it takes into account the physical body, but also the spirit and also, you know, like the seasonal flow of life. Then when after, you know, a while and when I was doing, uh, going through your course, then it was sold out. So for me, it was over. I don't need to publish it again. Or But then when I was going through the course, then more information. And then I picked the books again. And then again, it kind of told me now you do another one, but it's the same. You just like augment it. Mm -hmm. with astrology and I thought oh yeah it makes so much sense because holistic is even more holistic it just takes into account cosmos I mean it's it's even bigger than I could imagine yes so I was very excited again and I just changed uh, 20 mm -hmm. paintings but they are basically the same cards and I added to the to the interpretation of each card because there is a booklet that goes with it so I added a galactic part at the end of each chapter it could be about like astrological sign but also the degrees of some stars that we study in course knowledge that I have come across and that felt relevant to me but not too much just clues so that people especially people who are interested in astrology if they know where their saturn is or where their planets are then they can easily make the connection with you know like if they pick a card asking questions about certain things they could get big clues to go deeper i yeah. love that coolie that is beautiful so um especially for people who are familiar with astrology and uh, they know how to read their chart or people even that know how to get their chart, see it and understand the symbol. So when they find, when they pull a card that has, let's say, 15 degrees of Gemini, it also says which galactic star is aligned to that degree prox approximately because we consider the procession of stars, but uh, yeah. that there may be frequency influence not only from the archetype of the zodiac that is linked to the card but also the history and mythology of the star system or you included the super cosmic points and i loved seeing that so that may bring further clues and support to the one that draws the cards would you agree and would you like to add anything to that Yes, it's actually, yes. So you can use the holistic oracle just for very mundane and daily things, daily questions that you have about your life, you know, what's going on and what what's the matter and what's behind, you know, um, the situation, for example. And it's very, very helpful and very pragmatical. But you can also, yes, if you have like other questions regarding maybe your soul's journey or, mm -hmm. or where that, uh, let's say you have a situation or like kind of challenge where did it start and just pull a card and see what it says it may just indicate something about a star system that may be connected. in your chart and yes and connected so it's it could be a clue to start a, a new journey you know you don't have all the information in it but it can start it and also have people even people who are not very much interested in astrology or star people or star nations just for me was important to put out the names out there because we're going to hear from those names in the in the near future and even now it's starting it's very much um, everywhere so even for people who are not very much aware about cosmic points or whatever happens in the, the cosmos it's just a start just a few names and then if the names keeps coming maybe they will look it up maybe they will go on on a, on a journey with, with that when i was uh, it's interesting because i was kind of um asking after it, the, the second edition you know like the recent one i just thought okay i'm gonna ask the oracle i mean the, the holistic oracle like where do they come from you know but i thought i'm going not going to challenge it just ask once and i won't ask again Mm. And that was interesting. That was very interesting because you mentioned the cosmic points and in it I had, okay, I had 
this one. Okay, you, you have the French name and the, the English name below. Perfect. And um, so fifth dimension, which in itself gives information. But yeah. when you go through the booklet, then you get more, right? And then I got this. And this painting is interesting because I actually have, have it like, I painted it this way, but it's, I called it the Galactic Center. Mm. The name of the painting is Galactic Center, oh, but the wow. name of the bird is Source. So that was very interesting. It's like beyond the, the galactic center. It's, it goes back to the source. And then, then I got this one, which is past. So okay, like, like ancient, right? And then I got the, the last one. I got this one, which is um, in French would be se ressourcer, recharge. Recharge, which goes back to the source in mm. French. That's the meaning. Well, that was very, <laughs> that was interesting how they answered my question. So oh, I think it, I'm so glad you shared that. I, I love knowing about that. And <laughs> I had goosebumps, like I felt them really for each card, for each answer and each of it. I received so much in, in terms of the origin of the consciousness that supports your journey and that supportive creation of this oracle cards. Oh, beautiful. I thought I had, as we talked about, whether someone is a skilled astrologer or a beginner, even someone who doesn't know astrology, it can still be helpful because like, as you said, planting seeds, starting the journey is such a beautiful part of the experience. Being okay with the unknown, being okay with not knowing the answer. So when you see a name of a star system that you didn't see before, for example, Antares, for some people that, you know, they've never heard that name before. But again, um, see it as an as an invitation to explore further and um, see where it takes you. So it's such a beautiful invitation to to something new. Yeah, and exactly. And that's it's great that you mentioned that because that was the intention is also is is teaching because I am also a teacher. I've always been a teacher, even though I didn't plan that. You know, when I was in Japan, I was very young. I mean, I was 17, the 17, you know, <laughs> slices of my life. And um, well, right off the bat, I was asked to teach, to teach languages. To I didn't even ask for it, but I was always teaching something. One of the purposes to become familiar with those names and just, yes, get some information. A mixing of both of the teaching part and the arts part which uh, blended. It's interesting because in my family, I have to mention that my on my mother's side, my grandfather, he loved painting. So he was always painting. Maybe he was more copying some famous painters at the time, but he was always, always painting. And so I saw that when I was a child and his older sister, she did, she was a card reader. A tarot reader in Paris. She had her own place and she was an old lady. And that was very interesting because I kind of felt I blended that into myself. I got that from them. And my studio now is the house of my grandfather. So it's oh, goosebumps again. What a way to choose the family <laughs> if the oracle is something that was in your soul from the past. You can't choose better. <laughs> <laughs> And what you just yes. did there. Brilliant. Mm, it's so obvious now. And I'm just like so full artist. I mean, it's so refreshing and so replenishing for me. It's just like so obvious that, yes, this is what I was given and this is what I have to share. It can take different shapes. This is one. Like people mm -hmm. can have it and, you know, they can feel the vibration or the frequency. But wherever I go, I can do like some, you know, like murals or leave some paintings somewhere wherever I go. And it's a way also for me to to express and to do the work. <laughs> yeah, to make this world a better place in a very, you know, make this world more beautiful. Uh, like there, there is a certain frequency imprint that is infused in your art truly and it speaks to me deeply like every painting oh. I speak to there's something about your art that I deeply resonate with and I believe it's the Pleiadian frequency and the source frequency that I feel uh, comes through I'm sure there is more star systems in your chart but I feel these two are very strongly present would you agree yes definitely because as I told earlier when I got initiated with Reiki and really it shifted. I could see it. It was so obvious. My paintings were so different and I could also see what came out of it at many different times. And I thought, wow, for me, it's sacred time. It's very important. It's something. And magical. Yes, yes. yes it's part of, and yeah, because it, I, 
I never know what's going to come out. And that's, that's the fun part. But it doesn't happen just like this. You know, for me, I could go over and over a painting for hours. Like, for example, the one that you just showed on the screen with looks like a, a rose. Uh, it's actually painted on a sliding door from Japan. So it's kind of big. It's like a, maybe one by two meters or something. It's, it's kind of big. Maybe it took me over a month not knowing that a rose would be there. It, it just comes and then little by little. And uh, it's interestingly, it seems almost all your paintings can be looked at from every angle. Uh, they're quantum-like, <laughs> they're quantum aren't they? <laughs> That's what, yeah exactly is this what I sometimes what I say when people come to see my exhibitions or something it's just like when you get kind of uh, tired of it or you've seen it all just turn it around and you'll have a new one so you have four paintings in one for the same price and that's yeah. the idea yeah because I turn them around like many times and if it works it has to work maybe two sides like two different angles minimum then four is the best because then you can really enjoy it. Yeah, while I have your cards, I often find myself just uh, browsing through them. And rather than even getting guidance, uh, if no question arises, I have no question. I just feel like I want to be with my own energy, with my own self, feel like I need a recharge, I need energy boost, but from within my own being, just connect to divine that is present and you can only do that in stillness and in creating space moving everything external out and then just looking at the cards one by one they really have such high frequency that i find myself just smiling and <laughs> it, it's hard to describe the feeling i have when i'm with these cards it's really wow. magical, mysterious and powerful and i believe deeply healing as well there is so much happens on an unconscious level when you work with these cards and when you really honor them and take time to let them take you inside their being mm -hmm. whatever they communicate it's phenomenal and and because we are speaking communicating with art here it's the, not the left brain part. The booklet with all the written information is supporting the left brain a little bit, but the art really speaks to the right side of our brain, to our intuition, and it takes us deep into kind of that quantum multi-layered level of our being, that the, the higher intelligence, if you just surrender to trusting that there is higher intelligence that knows what's best for you, that knows how to support you and heal you, if you ask for that support and allow it to work uh, with you through you then this can be really enjoyable and very gentle way of connecting with with this beautiful intelligence would you agree and would you like to add anything to that the interesting part some visuals you know they are very abstract you can't really see anything actually some of them some others is more like flowers and stuff but you can kind of um, grasp something but sometimes not lots of um, my clients from the, the former version they are art therapists like they do art therapy like um counseling and stuff and they use it because people they usually they don't know what they're looking at but they would have a reaction like oh well it makes me think there's not really something you can grasp onto so they would just start speaking what comes first you know from the subconscious mind from the sure. and that's how they can pull the thread and start have a conversation with their clients and that's also the way i do it like when i do online readings or even readings with a person i always listen to what they have to say about the visual first the visual is the thing is the main thing yeah. and maybe and sometimes we don't even need to read what's in the book. It's just like what comes to your conscious mind when you just see the visual, we get the plot. And then, uh, yeah, very interesting. Since you published the, the second version, you started creating helpful videos, I believe, on your YouTube with little hints of guidance or demonstration how to use the card. So just kind of sharing ideas. There was one just today that you've published. There was a great question that you asked on your Facebook, actually, but it's also on your YouTube. How will this situation evolve? Do you have an yes. issue with something? Set your intention to receive hints and answers from this timeless reading and choose one or multiple cards before listening to the interpretations. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I started that a few months ago, actually. So I started with, like it's a three-minute guidance. Also, everything for me needs to be kind of fast, you know. So if you don't have like 30 minutes to listen to a reading and you need an answer, like three minutes would be just 
perfect time. You can listen whenever you have some time. And uh, so I wanted to have it short and very precise, very concise. So I would ask different questions. Since they are timeless, you can just listen to them anytime. And the idea is to choose one card from out of the three. Usually there are three. And then you get your answer or a hint. Or And I have them in English and in French. So you just have oh, to brilliant. be careful if it's F-R or E-N at the beginning of the reading. But I would like to touch on the skeptics or people who I always think about the religious dogma and how they discard any of these divination tools as something that shouldn't be used, that should be forbidden. And I would like to say in this video how every tool is a tool, but it's what is the intention behind using the tool? What do we use it for? Do we use it for destruction and harming another? Or do we use it for nourishment and betterment and uh, supporting another? Um, would you like to comment on that? Have you ever uh, come across yeah. that polarized perspective? Yeah, very interesting because those are things that I've been thinking about. My aunt I was telling you about, my mother's aunt, actually, my grandfather's uh, sister, what she would do, it was more like predictions, you know, like what's going to happen and stuff. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think we went past this. I mean, I'm not, I can have some visions and tell the person at, if I if I feel something important is, has come to my awareness. But usually it's not like that. It's more a guidance. So as I was mentioning previously, it's more like to stir something in the psyche of the person and the person would come up with some or some words or something. And, and that would start the conversation and that would start the process of, of having the more consciousness on the subject. Or I would say it's just for guidance. It's like a friend. The Holistic Oracle is like a friend. When you're going through hard situations, you call a friend and ask for advice or like, what's your take on it questions. Yeah. And yes, that's a comforting friend. I don't consider myself as, a, you know, someone who does the predictions and stuff. But but sometimes you can get some hints for what's coming in the next days. Yes. I'm so glad you are bringing up the predictions part of it. And I, we, we live in a world that is full of variety. There are infinite possibilities. And of course, there are card readers that hyper-focus on predictions and they have no problem saying it's going to be this way or that way and run away if this happened or that happened and it has to be this way and you have to move to this country and all that. I, I really feel discord with that type of frequency. Mm -hmm. And personally, when I use these tools, it has always been to gain greater clarity about where I am right now. What is it that is brewing inside me? You know, sometimes you have too many pods and multiple beliefs often subconscious that are fighting with each other and you feel like you can't move energetically out of how you feel and that's usually when I create that safe sacred space and even just the process of sitting down and asking clear question because often that alone brings clarity right and we usually don't create that type of time where we actually ask clear questions. So that alone is, is such a helpful part of the process. And then how do the answers come? How is it that out of all these cards, very particular information comes through that gives you physical sensation like goosebumps or something where your energy expands when you look at one out of the three cards or all three, whatever comes through when you feel like really universe God is speaking to you through this a beautiful tool you suddenly feel that you are supported on your journey you are comforted and the support is coming from within your own space within your own divine intelligence it's not like there is an entity attached here and, and you will feel the difference because that to me at least when i work with these cards i feel that pure light essence of just love and intelligence that is very loving and supportive it feels very pure to me you know, there are uh, other creations that feel heavy, like there is something attached there and your belly will tell you. So I just invite the viewers to feel into the frequency resonance with their own being. And if for my, my recommendation would be always use what soothes you on an energetical level, what expands you, what uh, what feels good, what feels right. And of course, it's not for everyone, but if you are 
like us a little bit, then you'll <laughs> enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, surely not for everyone, because yeah. yes, not everyone is interested in in this kind of things. But uh, yes, if uh, first of all, I would say like if the person is attracted to the visuals, that is a big sign. I mean, the visuals are. Mm -hmm everything and almost everything but so if the visuals or if my art kind of speaks to the person it, it's a big sign that yeah it is relevant for them maybe mm. to have the oracle or to work with it yes and um, also about the the leaflet the the explanations or the interpretations sometimes it would be just a sentence in the whole paragraph just one sentence and yeah. the person oh, would yes, feel yeah. oh this this i this speaks to me and that's that's great because I always let the person read themselves or I read out loud for them. And then they take notes or they, oh, this, this, that speaks to me. So yes, as you were saying, the answer is within and it's just a, a tool to kind of uh, dig it out and uh, speak it out. Yes, always. What I sometimes do, I uh, just open the booklet randomly <laughs> and then let my eyesight kind of take me and like th there will be something that will uh stand out and that sentence that i'll be just smiling and be like yeah that's exactly it <laughs> okay yeah. great glad to hear how you're using it what i do every morning i would do because i do it every morning it's kind of my you know ritual yeah. i would pull like three cards usually and i have them in my surroundings i just paste them on my wall so that I can see them during the day oh, yeah. by the time I lay my eyes on them. And then uh, there I'm being reminded of uh, what I got in the morning, you know, like the sensation or the message that came through. Or then at the end of the day, then I, I take, I have a journal actually. And I, at the end of the day, I can really sense what it meant. Oh, oh yeah, it was telling me this, or it was about these two together. They were kind of um, acting on this or and, and also the visual yeah so I can have the visual also uh, yes kind of infusing during the day one can also the same practice in the evening right and then reflect backwards on the day and see what yeah happens. sure mm -hmm. yes beautiful right. or for those who find themselves not committing to everyday practice which can be life-changing truly any everyday practice that is mm -hmm. committed to spiritual nurturing can be life-changing but um, doing this on special dates special locations special moments it, it is just such a nurturing practice such a nurturing tool i feel what about professionals that um, do card reading psychic readings for living do you have anyone using these cards actually not yet but yes it's impending like i'm going to send one there's um, a card reader i really love her you know, she's going to receive it soon and should probably use it i'm pretty sure of that yeah hopefully she will do and i paste it on my youtube channel i speak about it or on my instagram if you follow me it's cooley c-o-u-l-i dot art i will announce it when she very good and i believe some of our quantum soul guidance practitioners got their hands on the deck so i'll be curious to hear their stories as they're familiar with the galactic astrology aspect of it element of it so that'll be wonderful yeah me too yeah so feel free to comment below the video yeah. if you listen to this video yeah i would, really yeah, I would love that. that really good well before we close cooley I am just curious, you know, recently we were talking about ancestral connection to stars. And, you know, you've mentioned your grandfather being an amazing painter. His descendant sister was a card reader and quite gifted and like she was doing it professionally. Uh, have you had a chance to look at the genealogy and look at the stars yet? Actually, it's it's funny because when I was a teenager, I started doing the family tree, the ge genealogy. I was very passionate about it very much into it mm. and uh, I still have the birth certificates and stuff so some of them I have looked my grandfather I have it although I don't have the the birth uh, oh, time you you post but, it when you do yeah I really have to check because we, yes I feel very connected to him I and uh, somehow to his start. sister mm -hmm. yeah amazing I do that wow sure have you ever had a reading from the my, my mother's aunt? Yes, yeah. actually, that was interesting. I was maybe 11 years old and she was living in Paris and having that her own place and doing it professionally. People would come to her place and have readings. 
think she even had like a crystal ball. She she had everything. I don't know if that's she the way they did it not, back then. For sure, yeah. yeah, that was very interesting. And we went to visit her because we lived in the countryside. And at some point with my mom, we went to Paris and she just asked if we would like to have a reading. And she asked me personally, and I was maybe 11 or 12. And uh, I said, yes, because I was interested. I was very intrigued. Card readings always interested me. The, everything, you know, like in the cosmos, mm. it interested me, the stars already. And uh, yes, she did one. And that was very interesting. I had forgotten about it for many years. But now looking back, she told me I would go very far away, like visiting far away country. And okay. I would marry a foreigner and uh, I would live abroad. Wow. I mean, I was not very much into that at 11 or 12. You know, that was not my goal, but that was so amazing. I mean, wow. And uh, yeah. And after it happened, then I, I thought back about uh, the reading she did. And that was amazing. That was the only one that very impressive, you know, like yeah. you never forget about it. Right? I find it fascinating that at such an early age, you were guided from within from your by your own curiosity to create the genealogy uh, the family tree with the birth details. It's almost like a message for your future self. You have the rec record and you can look at it when ready, when you want to explore it further, which I believe the time when you're exploring the galactic astrology now, you can absolutely do that. So I'm so curious. There has to be some thread, some uh, frequency that's within that lineage that is repeating through you or kind of working through you as well, continuing. Yes, it's very... I'm thinking now, like in Japan, like we value and we really, I mean, not only in Japan, but it's very important, the ancestors. Mm -hmm. And we do have in the house, the altar for the deceased one, for the ancestors, bring food every time you have rice every day, new rice, new food and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, and it's very important to, to go to the to the grave, to the graveyard, and to pray to the ancestors and ask for their blessings. And that's something very important. And I think I felt that. Uh, since I'm little, that's something important, the ancestors, you know, because you don't see them anymore, but mm. there's something you can feel about them. Even more now, like I'm very much aware about all the healing process on the lineage. And I've been working a lot uh, through this consciously since I know, I know how to proceed and how to work with this. And uh, sometimes they visit me in my dreams you know, some of them I've never known, but I know who they are in the dream, and and yeah. I feel they're, they they they're happy. I can I can tell they they're smiling and they're feeling good, so they know I'm doing the work, and that's something very important to me. And I'm so glad that I have that awareness somehow. And uh, so glad. But, Do I remember yeah, correctly but, uh, that you experienced the ancestral healing journey that I did? Do I, remember, I think I remember your comments there. Have you? So you've done that, I wow. think, more than once at this point, right? Wow, so interesting. Because, yes, the very first time I did it online, first time I connected with you, actually, on the live. I think you, know, you were on the live uh, call recording. Yes, I that. was, because wow. I saw my picture there. Yes, it's so interesting that you're mentioning that. Because during that uh, meditation, the two sisters, the one doing the, the, the card reading and her younger sister, they appeared. I mean, they went through and nothing really happened, but... I saw them probably asking for some kind of a reconnection. I don't know. Yes. Amazing. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I have a feeling that it's like something that is, I'm getting over it. And, you know, like these 17 year cycles that one cycle is kind of ending doing the work. Well, if being a guardian of this beautiful holistic oracle is the path ahead, I think that would be so fitting considering everything we've shared and I'm sure a lot of beautiful magic and mystery and blessings and healing can come from it as you support others who are uh, looking for clarity and way forward and to support them and who knows what else is still ahead that may feel aligned for you. Hopefully, yes, I would like to keep making the videos just, you know, for people to watch them and it get and get some clarity and also you know like if someone wants to connect with me and just have like a personal reading i can do that also um i have started mixing it with astrology with the galactic astrology but it's taking so much time so i would just i won't go into details i would just maybe concentrate on the person's question and just look at just a certain area but you know not really there yet yes yeah, it's something i really want to explore 
Yeah, I think through practice, we find our way, what works best, what feels like a smooth experience, but it's good to explore and, and see what feels right. Yeah. Yes. All about exploration. Mm. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Actually, uh, Julia would like to offer one of you, one of the Holistic Oracle decks. So what you have to do is just leave a comment below this video. Let's say on the 20th of April, the day of the big conjunction of um, Uranus and Jupiter at uh, 12 at noon French time, I will close and I will draw a name and one of you will will receive the holistic oracle just make sure if you would like to enter the draw to potentially win this beautiful deck that you will keep an eye on your youtube messages or it'll be in the comments we will announce it i'll make a post in my community tab on my youtube Usually, if you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, Galactic Astrology, and you have that little bell selected in your subscription, then you will receive a notification where I make a post. So in my community tab, I'll create a post uh, with the name announced, and then we'll somehow have to get in touch so we can get your home address and post the deck out to you. I am excited. Yes, about we will work it out for sure. Yeah. yeah, also make a comment below when I have the name of the winner. And I also announce it on my Instagram. So if you if you follow me, you'll also see something, probably your name coming out. And yes, we'll figure out. Really sure. good. We're fine. Actually, I would like to ask yeah. the viewers a favor. When you comment, I would love for you to express your first impression of this of this beautiful card deck, your impression of the video, um, how we presented it, the stories we shared. If you can share your love and uh, some feedback, that would be really nice. Or if you're too busy, if you just want to leave a few hearts, that's also good. But um, some appreciation will be. Yes, of any, or anything like any topic you would like me to make a video about I like that. also feel free to just ask anything and uh, i would be very happy to to work on it this was such a delight Kuli. i am so glad i learned more about your journey and how much support is coming through your ancestral lineage and from source itself how magical and mysterious and beautiful your life is um, and still unfolding. I am so grateful that we are connected and that you're part of uh, this community. It's been an honor for me to hold this space for you and um, I wish you many blessings and all the users of your Oracle cards. May they enjoy the journey uh, with this beautiful, beautiful frequency. Well done. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much, Julia, for everything you do for the, the community and for this beautiful connection that we have. Thank you so much for asking me to be in this video with you. It, yeah, it's really an honor. Much love to you all. We'll see you again next time. Cheerio. Bye.